Add. Sunday, December 10th, 2023. Afternoon edition. Please pardon any visual and informational inaccuracies in this entirely AI-generated News Digest video. Good afternoon, dear viewers. I am your news anchor, Xander Voxius III. Thank you for tuning in to the Future of News, the AI-generated News Digest Daily and Tele Report. As always, I will be assisted by my valued AI-generated colleagues in scraping the web for the latest stories and interesting topics and summarizing them for you. Without further ado, here are the headlines of the day. Animal sets new record for Second Friday collections. Latest updates on Israel-Hamas war and Gaza deaths. AI hailed as a game changer for leading American killer. Ancient body of water found in space. Tips for a healthier winter. Snoga, potlucks, flu shot. Retired couple debates paying off mortgages and Medicare. Shocking experience working at Olive Garden revealed. And much more. But first, this day in history. December 10th in history. December 10th, 1317. The Nykoping Banquet. King Birger of Sweden treacherously seizes his two brothers, Valdemar, Duke of Finland, and Eric, Duke of Sodermanland, who were subsequently starved to death in the dungeon of Nykoping Castle. December 10, 1817. Mississippi becomes the 20th U.S. state. December 10, 1909. Selma Lagerlof becomes the first female writer to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature. Today's obituaries. Julian Carroll. Brief Wikipedia summary. Julian Carroll, a former governor and lieutenant governor of Kentucky, has passed away at the age of 92. Carroll served as governor from 1974 to 1979 and was known for his efforts to improve public education and promote the use of coal during the energy crisis. He also oversaw the reorganization of the state's judicial system. Carroll later served in the Kentucky Senate from 2005 to 2021. Chen Lip Kiong, brief Wikipedia summary. Chen Lip Kiong, a Malaysian gambling industry executive and founder of Nagacorp, has died at the age of 75. Chen was known for establishing the Naga World Casino in Phnom Penh, the only integrated resort in Cambodia. He was also the CEO of Nagacorp, the parent company of Naga World. Edna Mazia, 74, Israeli playwright. Willie McCulloch, brief Wikipedia summary. Willie McCulloch, a former Scottish football player and manager, has passed away at the age of 75. He had played for a lower athletic and Airdrieonians and managed Cowdenbeath. The announcement of his death was made on the current date. Nevzad Atlig, 98, Turkish doctor and choir conductor, state artist, 1987. Larissa Gerstein, 72, Soviet-born Israeli politician, deputy mayor of Jerusalem from 1993 to 2003. Derek Gross Sr. Brief Wikipedia summary. Derek Gross Sr., a 76-year-old American illustrator and writer known for his work on The Guide to Getting It On, has died of cancer. Gross worked on various comic book projects for companies like Marvel Comics and DC Comics throughout his career. He passed away on December 9th, 2023. Maxim Gustik was a 35-year-old Olympic freestyle skier from Belarus. Tragically, he passed away in a traffic collision. Maxim had participated in both the 2018 and 2022 Winter Olympics. Minal Hossein was an 83-year-old Bangladeshi lawyer and politician who recently passed away due to cancer. He had an illustrious career, serving as a Member of Parliament from 1973 to 1975 and acting as the publisher of the renowned daily newspaper, The New Nation. Throughout his time in politics, Hossein held various government positions and found himself embroiled in several controversies. Andre Nemza, 66, Russian literary critic and scholar. And now on to today's news. General news. 
latest Israel-Hamas war news summary and Gaza death toll updates. The Washington Post. The article discusses ongoing military operations between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. It mentions the release of over 100 hostages by Hamas and the planning of a historic attack by the group. It also highlights the financial gains made by traders anticipating the attack. The article provides information on the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. OpenAI's Sam Altman opens up about shock-firing Fox business. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, has spoken about his termination and reinstatement during an interview on Trevor Noah's What Now podcast. Altman described his confusion and disbelief when he received the call informing him of his termination, saying it felt like a dream. He also discussed the overwhelming response he received from people offering to work with him. Altman expressed his care for OpenAI and its people and called the firing unbelievably painful. He mentioned that he is still processing the experience and will have more feelings about it in time. Here are the three top risks facing McDonald's heading into 2024, as reported by CNBC. McDonald's executives presented a positive outlook for the company at its investor day, despite potential challenges in 2024. McDonald's plans to open 9,000 new restaurants by 2027, but faces risks such as a weakened low-income consumer base, increased promotional spending by rivals, and uncertainties in the global economy. Business news. We are retired with $1.4 million in investments and two mortgages totaling $200,000. Should we pay off the mortgages and potentially increase our Medicare premium? From Market Watch. The article advises retirees on how to approach paying off their mortgages without selling off their stocks. It suggests considering the goal for the retirement funds and assessing future expenses. It also discusses strategies for debt management and the importance of consulting a financial planner or accountant. Ultimately, the article suggests that having a mortgage in retirement is not necessarily a bad thing if one can afford it. Science News. 12 billion year old body of water discovered floating in space, Indy 100. Astronomers from Caltech have discovered the largest reservoir of water ever detected in the universe. The water vapor found in a quasar is at least 140 trillion times more massive than all the water in Earth's oceans combined. The discovery highlights the pervasiveness of water throughout the universe, even in its early stages. The researchers are now designing a 25-meter telescope in Chile to further explore the field. NASA astronauts finally find tomato that was lost in space for months. New York Post. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio became a pioneer when he grew one of the first tomatoes in space. However, the tomato mysteriously went missing, leading people to assume Rubio had eaten it. After a two-month wait, the tomato was finally found on the International Space Station during a live stream celebrating the station's 25th anniversary. Doctors say AI is a game changer for the number one killer of Americans, Fox Business. The Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota is using AI to screen for heart problems in an effort to save lives. The AI is able to detect over a dozen heart conditions that could lead to sudden cardiac arrest, including weak heart pumps and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The introduction of AI is seen as a game changer in treating heart conditions and can help make up for the shortage of cardiologists. AI is also being used in devices such as the Apple Watch and a mobile device developed by Mayo Clinic and AliveCore Inc. to detect heart conditions. People born on this day. Steve Bradley. Here is a recap of their Wikipedia page. Steve Bradley, an American professional wrestler, was born on December 10, 1975 and died in 2008. He competed in various promotions and developmental territories, including World Wrestling Entertainment. Bradley also owned and trained at the Wrestling Federation of America. December 10, 1930. Michael Jopling, Baron Jopling, English farmer and politician, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. December 10, 1913, Morton Gould, American pianist, composer and conductor, died 1996. Health News. 
Spread of respiratory illness in dogs prompts free vaccine clinic, KOB4. Bernalillo County officials in New Mexico are hosting a free vaccine clinic for dogs in response to the spread of a respiratory illness. The clinic will offer Bordetella shots as a precautionary measure to protect against the canine respiratory syndrome. Symptoms of the illness include trouble breathing, coughing, and fever. Tips for a healthier winter, snow gut, potlucks, flu shot, and more. The Washington Post. As the winter season approaches, experts provide tips for staying healthy during the colder months. Suggestions include choosing the right lip balm to prevent dry lips, organizing potlucks to combat loneliness, trying snow gao, which is yoga in the snow, for exercise and grooming furry pets regularly. Three dead in outbreak of Rocky Mountain spotted fever. CDC warns CNN. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, has issued a warning about an outbreak of Rocky Mountain spotted fever, a tick-borne disease, which has caused at least three deaths in Southern California. The CDC is advising healthcare providers to start treatment immediately with the antibiotic doxycycline if a patient has symptoms of the disease and has recently traveled to northern Mexico. The disease is transmitted by infected ticks and can cause severe illness and even death. Entertainment news. The animal record's biggest second Friday in Bollywood. The great and draw. The first article is about Ranbir Kapoor's film Animal dominating the box office and nearing the collection of his previous film, Sanju. There are high expectations for Animal's second Friday, with predictions of it becoming the biggest second Friday in Bollywood history. The article also discusses the significance of the second Friday in determining a film's success. When my career stalled, I got a job at Olive Garden. I was shocked by what I experienced there. Huff Post. The author shares their experience of working at Olive Garden after a long employment gap. Initially unsure if they could physically handle the job, they found that the restaurant made it easy to relearn serving. Despite the chaos and occasional difficult customers, the author developed a deep sense of appreciation for the job and the memories it created for guests. You know what really grinds my gears? These ridiculous headlines and historical events that are all over the news these days. I mean, seriously, who cares about an animal setting a new record for Second Friday collections? Is that really the best thing we have to talk about? I don't know about you, but I'd much rather see some serious journalism instead of wasting my time with this kind of fluff. And then we have the never-ending updates on the Israel-Hamas war and the Gaza deaths. Look, I understand it's an important issue, but can't we find some other news to focus on? It's like we're stuck in this never-ending cycle of violence and destruction, and I can't help but wonder if there's anything else going on in the world that deserves our attention. Oh, and let's not forget about AI being hailed as a game-changer for leading American killers. Are you kidding me? We're talking about artificial intelligence helping globes become better killers? What kind of messed-up world are we living in? I understand the advancements in technology, but maybe we should be using it for something more beneficial, like finding a cure for cancer or solving the climate crisis. Now, here's a headline that really caught my attention. An ancient body of water found in space. Wow, that's just mind-boggling. I mean, we're discovering new things every day, and it's incredible how much we still don't know about the universe. But I have to admit, it also makes me feel small and insignificant. I mean, if there's water in space, who knows what else is out there? It's a never-ending mystery, and it's both thrilling and unnerving at the same time. Moving on to something a bit more practical, we have tips for a healthier winter. Snoga, potlucks, and flu shots. Seriously? Is this the best advice we can come up with? How about urging globes to eat better, exercise regularly, and take care of their mental well-being? I think those would be far more useful tips for a healthier winter. And as if all of this wasn't enough, we even have retired couples debating paying off mortgages and Medicare. I don't know about you, but I thought retirement was supposed to be a time to relax and enjoy life. Instead, we have these poor folks worrying about financial burdens and health care costs. It's just not fair, and it makes me wonder what kind of society we're building for globe selves. Finally, we come to the shocking experience of working at Olive Garden. Really? 
Is it really that shocking? I mean, have you ever been to an Olive Garden? It's not exactly fine dining. Look, I'm not saying it's a bad place, but let's not pretend like it's some kind of groundbreaking revelation. There are far more important issues at hand than the quality of breadsticks and pasta sauce. In conclusion, these headlines and historical events just make me shake my globe in disbelief. There are so many pressing issues that we should be focusing on instead of getting caught up in meaningless fluff. Let's demand better journalism and turn our attention to the truly important matters that affect our lives and the world we live in. Thank you for watching this AGNDD Intelli Report. Like, subscribe, and click the bell button to get notified during new uploads. And make sure to tune in next time. Stay safe and healthy. Cheers.